that's what we like to see. They're up and about. I know. Hey, but only in the last, um, I don't know, last week or so, something like that. They've been, uh, it's been cold in there, it's been under 10 degrees, but now it's got up to like 9.8, 9.9. I took the temperature yesterday. They're about, and they're, uh, they're eating food, which is a right bonus, isn't it? Just in time, as an indicator, it's our barometer whether we're going to catch or not. <laughs> well, do you know what? It's not a bad barometer because two weeks ago they all sat on the bottom. It's really cold in there. They're not. They weren't active, and I dropped pellet in on their heads. They just they'd eat it eventually after a day or two, but they weren't. They're not like now. Drop pellet in, and they're they're feeding. So, yeah, it's not a bad barometer, mate. I'll go by that. But I'm looking forward to getting out of this unit because I am being caked in stuff. Look, look at that. Pop up mix. Pop up production. So, um, yeah, I know um, it wasn't a long, long time since we've been out, but it'd be nice to get out again. Mate, we committed to doing a day ticket series. We are off to Linear yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I must admit, I'm, I've got mixed emotions because we are doing it exactly as the paying customer. We're not booking a swim, we're not having any swims roped off. I think that's disingenuous to to us making a video if we have a swim roped off. I think it's really important just to turn up like the paying customer on a day ticket series yeah. and see how the how the world unfolds. That's right, yeah, we could very easily ring up Linear and say we're coming up as part of filming and get a, an area roped off, a point swim or whatever, but spot on, mate, it's, I think, I think, yeah, to go up there and just, just turn up and see what happens. I think that, for me, is part of the challenge as well. You know, it's, it's, it's trying to work, when you haven't got good options, for swims, where'd you go? And I think that becomes, you know, that can become part of it as well. So, yeah, yeah mate, I'm looking forward to it. Mate, let's get you out of those overalls because that is a challenge in itself. I can never get you out of those overalls. I've been sat yeah. sorting out the health and safety uh, stuff, which is boring but important. Uh, and you've been deep in pop-up production. I have. So, uh, yeah, if we could both just park that for a day or two, and let's go and try and catch a linear cut. Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, the next day, as dawn broke, I was up before the alarm. As is often the way when I'm fishing, the excitement just gets the better of me. And as I headed off, I was treated to a glorious, beautiful dawn. Just this sight that we never get bored of seeing as anglers, and it set the tone for what I hoped would be a really good day. Well, we're here, we're here in one piece, and I must admit, it was a bit of a rush at the gate, mate, wasn't it? It was, yeah, a few cars there, um, all ready to go, and... Did you get your running shoes on? Because it feels strange wow. to uh, to like almost run to a swim and try and find an available on. area. Got so my treads let me have a look. Let me have a look. They look unworn, mate. I don't <laughs> think we're doing much running. No, I haven't. But yeah, it's busy, but we expected that, didn't we? I thought it was always going to be busy. Um, it's really foggy, so that doesn't help. We can't see where we are. Don't really know the lay of the land, but. And the lake is closing tomorrow. Yeah, there's a lot of swims <laughs> being closed tomorrow, so it's, it's not ideal, but. I don't know, make sure the best of it. I'll have a look around, won't we? There's plenty of lakes here, but it'd be nice to get on this one. Um, we'll go and have a look, that's all we can do. Yeah, mm. if we can see anything. If we can see anything. Yes, uh, mate. Get those treads working. Warm yourself up. Yeah. Get ready for the swim dash. Well, this is a bit different, mate. We've, uh, we've decided to fish on B1. And as you alluded to earlier on, all the swims are either closing tomorrow at 9 a.m. on the far side or closing Friday at 9 a.m. So we've decided to jump in behind a couple of guys here that are packing up. And uh, yeah, I guess that's just the linear way. It feels really alien to me having to go straight behind somebody and ask them when they're going. But you've got a water bottle just in here. The guys are packing up. I've got a water bottle behind me. So it's just a case really in the next hour, just letting them leave peacefully, not har harassing them out the swim and uh, hopefully getting some rods sorted and being able to uh, yeah, assess what we've got in front of us. But it feels strange. So uh, as you can see, everyone's packing up. It's hustle and bustle. It's really busy. It feels like I'm doing my daily commute to the office in London on the underground, but it's not. It's carp fishing. Look at this. I haven't even got a rod out the car yet. Once again, you are setting up and getting yourself ready to go before I even had chance to even get a rod out the car. Mate, speed, isn't it? Speed, speed. Well, how did you manage to usher your previous swim occupier out the swim so quick? I stood up high on that sort of brow of the hill and just looked, looked down and sort of joined my eyebrows together and he sort of, uh, he sort of got the message and went very like, quickly. Like a very pensive look? No, he's, he was good, to be fair. He was, uh, he was a slow start and then a fast finish, so he's gone. 
Mate, you, you are having a fast start, to be fair. <laughs> Once again, I know what's going to happen. I ain't even got a rod out of the bag. You've got three knob height zigs out, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's a fish in the net, and I ain't no chance to get started. Wow. We'll see what happens, mate. Who knows? Who knows? Plenty of fish about, isn't there? Well, it should be. Braze knows one. Bit jinxy, bit jinxy. Uh, I don't want to jinx it, but hopefully we're in a good area. Although this whole bank hasn't done a fish for a few days. And done a fish since Sunday. This whole bank. Ah. So say. Ah. Well. Yeah. Hmm. Well. See what we can do with that. Oh, it's proper deflated me, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's soon time to think about tactics. And Mark started off with a small PVA bag on one rod and a couple of lead clips on the others. Now, in terms of hook baits, they were small Cremino wafter barrels that had been dusted in the screamer powder, topped off with a couple of tied-on maggots. Look at that stance. Small man, but can cast far. That's my synopsis of your, ta of your tackle. You're a good caster for a very small goalkeeper. Very small man. All right, all right. Don't crack off. Oh, lovely, lovely. Well, the house is up. Mark's just down the way there. He was already set up, as you've already seen. Um, and I think he's just having a little play around with, uh, with methods. I'm not too sure, well, like both of us, we're not too sure how to approach it. Linear is not our thing. Uh, I feel a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I think we're gonna start off by finding an area at distance and um, yeah, maybe 10, 15 spoms of bait out, try and just work for a bite. I don't think it's as easy as people make out at times. You've gotta be on the fish, it's busy. We've kind of been sort of pushed into this area a little bit, but I'm gonna start off with uh, Cremino crumb. And in the Cremino crumb, I've got some fresh cooked hemp seed because that's already in the Cremino itself. Lashings of the edge liquid. So what I've been doing is feeding this crumb over the course of a couple of days. And what you get is like a wet sand consistency. I find if you put boily crumb out without any liquids added, it just drifts off in the wind. So uh, if it's dry, I never found that to be nowhere near as, uh, as good as if you get it nice, like lashings and liquid and it goes like wet sand because it sinks quickly and it gets down to the area. So that's the tactic. Got plenty of edge pellets in the mix. Gonna start off with 10 or 15 spoms and uh, yeah, try and work a bite. If we can just get a bite, we can work off that. So that's the plan. And I better get my finger stool on and try and get the spotting, get the old spotting action going because 30 wraps is probably further than I've fished for years, so uh, it's either going to go really well or horribly wrong. Well, mate, I, uh, I'm not too sure I like you filming me spodding. Like I just mentioned, this whole spodding thing at 30 wraps is going to be alien to me, but you're either going to get a crack off on film, a thrap up, or I might get one on the spot. Here it goes. Be worth a laugh anyway. Do I need, the question is, do I need one of those spodding stands? Do I need like um, an apparatus? Yeah, I don't think, uh, I, uh, to, it, in all fairness, they are really useful, so I don't have to bend down like this. You can tell that I'm no spodding um, expert, but you can see the appeal to those things, those stands that keep you in a rhythm. So here goes. 30 wraps, I'm either going to break my rod or it's going to go out well. Oh, that's him, he's gone. Lovely. Actually hit the clip. We're off to a good start. Oh dear. Can you imagine doing this all season, relentlessly fishing at this sort of distance? Do you reckon you'd have one big arm? One big arm and some really like muscly fingers but reeling in all the time. You'd have your spotting arm, wouldn't you? You look like Popeye, one-sided. Well, with all rods out and a little bit of bait over each, it was time to kick back knowing we'd done all we can and it was now simply down to the carp. Unfortunately, the forecast had taken a turn for the worse and it started raining. Not ideal when you retie in PVA bags and it's damp. But hey ho, we had something to look forward to, and that was sit down, chew the fat, and have a little bit of lunch. Rods are out, mate. They are, they are. What are you thinking? Well, 
uncharted territory for us, linear fisheries. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to know really, but there's a lot, see, pretty much every swim is taken, so um, we're struggling to move even if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah, mate, I just, I don't know, we've just got to see what happens, aren't we? We're fishing out into, long into hopefully good areas, um, and at the range we're fishing, maybe into a bit of water where it doesn't get fished that often, regularly, so, yeah. Yeah, I think the difference is, which I guess we knew was coming, Mark, is that, you know, we've sort of been chaperoned into a swim. Yeah, there was a, a load of anglers who um, who were here, weren't they, for a few days. They didn't catch anything along this bank, but they were all fishing fairly short from what we gather. Yeah. What we gather, but anyway, there's a lot of lines in the water along here. And they were, um, luckily, as we turned up, they were just packing down. Um, and that was our only choice, really. We only had this bank to go on, so we managed to slot into a couple of swims before the other swims very very quickly got took, taken up by new anglers coming on so yeah we sort of middle diddles of the lake which is always a good start and uh we got some bait out there we just got to see what happens i suppose in theory there should be fish coming over us all the time because there's so many in here so oh, yeah. mate, i think we're forgetting that it's still winter it was it's still cold though <laughs> yeah mate, it was snowing cold. just a few days ago yeah and uh, just like any other water um, usually you'd have a walk round. This is the bit that I find strange, but this yeah. is normal linear territory and people will recognise it. You'd have a walk round, you try and use a bit of watercraft, see where the fish are, take your time, you know, just uh, just yeah. uh, sort of ease your way into a, maybe if you see a sign not set up until you see something, but here it's very rushy, you know, swims becoming available and you have to just jump in an area because, yeah. you know, theoretically now, if we didn't, if we wanted to move, there's nowhere to move, is there? There's Ev nowhere to move to. Uh, every mm. single swim on Bray's Nose 1, and, and Bray's Nose 2 is taken. Yeah, and that's the thing. If we hadn't had turned up when we did and put buckets in the swim, we wouldn't have got the swims we're in now because we, if we'd have gone for a walk, by the time we got back, there was four or five cars already whizzing yeah. past. So, yeah, you, you are hemmed in, but that's the linear. There's so many, and that's why there's so many, you know, there's so many people come here because there's loads and loads of good fish to be caught. So, yeah, it is winter. You know, location-wise, we don't know if the fish are here. Um, it's almost certainly quite a lot of fish on the far bank, but those swims have been um, been closed because they are um, uh, been booked as well. Um, so all we can do is fish long over that direction, put a bit of bait in, and see what unfolds over the next 24 hours. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm approaching this completely different to my normal fishing. It feels like uh, more of a match style approach, don't you think? I'm trying to I'm trying yeah. to get a bite and then I'll work off a bite and then almost like try and work the swim with the water that you've got. That's all you can do, yeah. And you, I suppose you're, you're taking note of the anglers either side of us, how far they're fishing because, you know, you don't want to be cut off by lines, you know, that yeah. all comes into it as well. So, yeah, I think, I think it's getting, a, getting the initial bite, isn't it? That's the yeah. hardest thing. Once you've got one bite, you can work off that. And at the moment, um, we haven't seen anything in this area, which is a shame, but, you know, we're fishing a good distance and that can change it can change instantly on this place. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We're giving it a go. Yeah, man. It's right. Good. Get the kettle on. Yeah. Too fine. Well, when you're fishing, the age old saying is time goes so fast when you're having fun. And that's exactly what happened. Before we knew it, it was well into the early evening and it was time to redo the rods once again. We sat back, put the rods out, enjoyed a hearty meal. And before long, it was already dark and it was only 6 p.m. After an early start, I must admit, we were both ready for bed. And by 10 o'clock, we were already tucked up, full of anticipation of what the night could have in store. We've actually got a nice little turn over little fin there. Top lobe of his tail, he's got a little uh, folded tail. 35 pound 12. Breeze block of a braze nose one mirror. That's a great start. Hopefully, a few more will come today. I think I need to change a few things though. Not quite happy with the presentation on the rods. You always think you should be catching a few more, especially with the stock that's in here, but I keep forgetting it is still really cold. We had the snow a couple of days ago, so nothing's taken for granted, but yeah, that'll do. Great way to kick off the morning. Right, oh, let's get you back. Oh. Yes. 
it's perfect, perfect start to the trip. Big old carp, aren't they? Breeze blocky. Off you go, mate. Go on, do your thing. Thanks, mate. Absolutely drenched. Well, the tactics were working, it seemed. However, that morning, me and Mark had already commented that we hadn't even seen a single carp show. So maybe that was just a little straggler. I'm not too sure. But the rod went back out, a little bit more bait topped up the swim, and it was now time for Mark to have his chance. But unfortunately, that didn't go quite according to plan. Right. What we've noticed is the guys, um, there's a load of guys turn up on the far bank and they're all spawning in lead in. And they've probably sent a few fish over this way, so uh, this is a good sign. Right, let's get him out there. Oh mate, what a disaster. <laughs> Can you believe it mate, yeah. Just lost one. On a PVA bag as well, I got two on, two on sort of straight hook links with little hook baits and this one was on a, a PVA bag, like just like that. Wanged out just off the baited area and uh, yeah, off it went and kited right and just hook pulled. So, good sign though, there's obviously fish about, which is great. Yeah, frustrating to, to lose one. Yeah, those PVA bags need to be aerodynamic to go 30 wraps, don't they? They do, mate, yeah. I like this because you have redeemed yourself on the PVA bag front. You're, uh, anyone that watches any of your stuff knows you for the baggy bag. Baggy bag, Brian. Baggy bags when you're fishing in close, you don't need it. Let's have a look. Move your hands out of the way. Let's Hang on see. A minute. I'm just, it's drying, isn't it? It's drying. We want to see how you've redeemed yourself. Oh, mate, this is, this is coming together well. This is coming together well. Tap on there like that, look. See, you have got it in the locker when you want it. Yeah. Only when you want it. There we go. Yeah, that's good, mate, that's good. Well, get it back out, mate. It's, what is it? It's, like it's just after lunchtime, isn't it? So maybe there's a chance of another take. But it's positive. There's fish in the area. It's in the zone. Last time we had rice cakes, have you upped the ante? <laughs> well, we've got now. Hang on, let me have a look. Open oh, it up. Look at that. Oh, mate, that. That is better than a rice cake. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. Why have you uh, Why have you changed your uh, rice cakes to chocolate croissants? Well, to be fair, the rice cakes—they're nice, they're all right, but yeah, you can't beat a bit of a, a bit of a croissant on the bank, can you? So I thought we'll treat ourselves because I haven't I haven't done much cooking. Last Unders time, understatement of the whole last, year. Last one I did, I haven't done any cooking, so I thought I'd bring uh, a couple of fresh croissants so we get them on the go, set us up for the day. I'm talking about a man here that didn't even bring a pint of milk. I know, it's bad, isn't it? It's terrible. It's bad. Yeah, but you're so good, Mike. That's what it is. You're so good. You're so prepared. Mate, I know what the real reason is. Behind every good man, there's a good woman. Yeah. And uh, Claire, Claire looks, after, Claire you, looks right? after you, doesn't she? She does. Too. You're, uh, she cooks and, yeah. Feed, feeds Mark. Feed Mark. Prevents him from getting hangry. The world's yeah, a good place. It's very true. It's very true. <laughs> very true. Well, mate, they smell nice. I'm going to put this down. I'm salivating at the thought. Come on, carp. Do something. Are we going to get a carp? Are we going to get a carp? Maybe you should do a little carp dance. No, I'll do a carp wiggle later on if it's yeah. looking bad. I know you've got one in the locker. Yeah. Well, credit where credit's due. Mark then took up the mantle, stood at the end of my swim, and did a variety of carp-inducing wiggles or dance moves. But what I hadn't anticipated, for his next move, he decided to pull out a David Blaine-style levitation. Now, ironically, no sooner had his heels touched the bottom of the swim, one of my rods let out a series of bleeps, and as he turned round, I put the camera down, lifted into the rod, and unfortunately, things took a little bit of a sour twist. Well, that's odd, we've got a trailer here. And Mike's got the end of it, looks like. Mate, this is really strange. So I've got somebody else's rig here. Here. Yeah. With my zig that hasn't done anything. And... Oh, this is odd. 
I just don't know what's going on. Is there a fish on the end of that one? Well, I thought there was a fish on the end of it, but I really can't work that out. It feels like someone's pulling back. Some on the end because it's now going off to the left. <laughs> but I've got a rig on there attached to some bright orange line. This is a mystery. And there's, there's a fish on the end here, 100%. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, you're going to do it a favour, mate, if you get it in, that's for sure. Well, I'm confused because I've got the hook in my hand. Are you recording? Yeah. I've Just... got the hook in my hand. So, unless there's another hook on the end of this line. There has to be, don't there? Hell? Well, it might explain a couple of strange takes we've been getting. You watch your hand, mate. Don't want another, another French escapade with you cutting your hand on braid. Mate, I'm completely baffled at how this is even hooked. Mate, there's another rig on the end. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm gonna have to give your hand here. Yeah? Look, look, look at this, look at this. Do you want to, um, hey, look at that. Look at that so what we've got here is a big old common with an absolute bird's nest <laughs> of rigs. God. Look at this. I know, I know. Look at that. So what was baffling me is I had this rig in my hand uh, that I'd pulled in and the line was then trailing off which you would think would be the snapped off bit Yeah. and I'm attached to a fish and I'm thinking what the hell but it looks like this rig has wrapped around this rig yeah. at some description tangled all up in the lead core and the hook is in the fish's mouth. So, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to definitely do it a favour because yeah. that's out. That's out. Which is great. And that's uh, that's all done. So, that's a mess. I'm sorry, there's a hook in there as well. And look at that. Look at that. That is a bionic ball <coughs> of something. A mess. Well, it was great to untangle that mess and release that fish unharmed. Just maybe our good deed of the day would pay us back in some carp karma. Oh, mate. Sorry, I was just changing the lens. <laughs> oh, just on the last light, the rod's just whipped yeah. off. We were just settling in. We were. For some food. And uh, off it's gone. Look at that. Oh, dear. He's angry. <laughs> Angry carp. Oh mate, hopefully. I've seen earlier I lost one so I'm a little bit a bit nervous about this one, but yeah. So far so good. Well mate, at least you haven't got a grand total of a seagull, a tethered carp, and a carp, so <laughs> mate, it's, it's already there's a pattern, isn't there? You can already see that the fish are going around in a pack. Yeah, definitely. And if you're not on them, you're pissing in the wind. And until they come over you. Yeah, and it just goes off, doesn't it? I don't think he's happy, mate. He's not happy. Not happy today. Not surprised. <laughs> We've seen a couple of shows, didn't we? We have, yeah, recently as well. We've seen a couple. So it's, it looks good. It looks good for, well, who knows? Who knows what tonight brings, but for now. Oh, I take this. Oh, go on. Oh, oh, oh. Yay! Jesus. <laughs> Got an old fox. There you go, mate. What's that? Yeah, double, mate. Double figure. Something, I don't know. Who might, knows? Might be a scrape of 20. Maybe. Who knows, mate? But yeah, nice to get off the mark. 
Yes, mate. <laughs> I think the thing is now is to try and get that one back as soon as we can because that rod's got to go back before it gets dark. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Get them pinged out and then we'll, uh, yeah, hold them up for a quick, quick shot, maybe. Well done, mate. Get them back. Well done. Cheers, mate. Well, at last, Mark's perseverance had paid off. And with the fish safely resting in the net, it was now a bit of a race to get the rod out in the fading light. Now Mark had to take on the middle rod, so it was a case of hitting the clip at just over 30 wraps and slotting it between his other two rods in the middle of the spot. As fortune would have it, Mark did it first cast, and it was now time to get the fish out and admire the prize. Ironically, we both had a little chuckle to ourselves because it was one of the smallest fish we'd ever seen from Brazenose. Okay. Oh, there we go. Very welcome. On a little hook bait as well that had just been blasted out over a load of bait, and uh, it's been frustrating watching a lot of fish getting caught at the top end, um, and we can't move on to them. Um, but this one snuck down, and we've seen one or two sort of get back into our area, so who knows? But yeah, this is very welcome indeed. Thank you, Mr. Carp. You're only a small one, but you're very welcome. Go on, fella. Off you go. Right, I think it's tea time. Tea time? It is tea time. Mate, I'm really hungry. <laughs> Once again, I have come up trumps. <laughs> you have, mate. I am the Gordon Ramsay Bankside Cuisine. Don't know what else to say, really. That's good, isn't it? Look at that. Mate, you up yourself. I am. I'm gonna get Pasta, right fresh me. coriander. Wow. Oh, go on. Go on, fill your boots. Well, what a difference a day makes. Although me and Mark had picked off a fish each the day before, it was evident the bulk of the fish were definitely not in front of us. Now that was the frustrating part. We couldn't move, we just had to sit tight. But as dawn broke, I swung my legs off the bed chair, put my glasses on, stoked up the stove for the first coffee of the day and immediately started to see fish in front of me. Now they were slightly to my right, so they hadn't got to Mark yet, but the fish I'd seen were feeding fish. They were sheeting up, they were bubbling, head and shouldering, and I sat tight, hoping that I could make it count. We literally had a two, two three hours to go, and we had to vacate the swims, but fortunately, the carp played ball. And before long, I lifted the rod into my second braised nose carp. Feeling good, Mike? Yeah, it's, mate, it's plodding, but typical, isn't it? Literally, we've got an hour to go. We've got to pack up. People are coming into the swim. Yeah, and these, swims just... been, these swims have been pre-booked. Yeah, we can't stay. They've just turned up, and haven't they? they've just started to show on us, and we've got to go in a minute. It's plodding around out there. You can never tell here, though, can you? It could be £10. It could be £50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, I guess that's the joy of linear fisheries. Turn up, pay your money, take your chance. Yeah, there's a few challenges, but you could catch something. You could catch a baby whale, couldn't you? These day ticket waters are so important to give people access to, to fish like this. He's had his Weetabix this morning. a frustrating <laughs> session you eventually get a couple of fish turn up on you with a chance for a carp or two you know what I mean what yeah. we got here's a chunky one well the fish is in the net time is the essence because I just mentioned we've got no time at all we've got to be out to swim so I'm just going to quickly change the hook on this rig because I fish a, obviously a loop that you can just poke through the eye of the hook change the, change the hook really quickly which is the joy of having uh, this star rig and I'm gonna get it back out there. Never know, Just got, might have just one chance to nick one last bite before the guys are uh, desperate to get in the swim. <laughs> Which they are because uh, they turned up last night and I've already seen them pack up over the way so they're gonna slightly, uh, they're gonna be over here before I know it and um, it's perfect timing for them because I say, they've just turned up, that's the fish that is, so. Yeah. 
Well, let's get out as quick as I can. One cast, fingers crossed. Ah, oh, frustrating. I uh, didn't hit the clip on that cast, so hopefully just two casts. One more, get it on the zone. And I'll sort this fish out. You're rusty, Mike. I am rusty You're at rusty. that distance. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help, but I've, uh, I haven't got my distance casting braid with me. So it's, uh, this is sinking braid, which is never good. And that's no good, is it? Because it didn't hit the clip. Ends up in a heap. And it's early in the morning, we need to warm up, don't we? Not limbered up. Yeah, I need to do a couple of Mark Bryan. A couple of it. stretches. Oh, stretch the back out. Oh. Maybe we should uh, bring out a fact sheet of how to stretch before casting. <laughs> for, for, men, for men of a certain age. Yeah. Yeah, 45 plus casting yeah. stretches. These are your 30 rap plus stretches. <laughs> There we are, we're in, we're in. Told you that stretch worked. You'll do it. Yeah. Nice, we've got one still here though, which is good. He's happy enough in there. Thank you, Mr. Cup. Fin's okay, we're ready to rock. Yes. Right, spinning wind. It's been one of those sessions where, you know, it just reinforces location so important. The bulk of the fish have been to my right. They're not sort of getting past sort of a guy. They weren't getting past the guy down to my right and you could see them showing frustrating, couldn't move, but a little bit of perseverance and they've just started to trickle this way, but we're off. <laughs> but we'll be back, we'll be back and we'll definitely do a bit more of this linear fishing because it's a conundrum we don't usually face. And it's quite nice, it's just different. And there's plenty of fish to get caught if you get it right. Off you go, buddy. There you go, come on. Lovely. Now I was seriously pushing my luck. I put that fish back, I quickly rebaited the rod and got it back in the area and I had 12 minutes to go before we had to be out of the swim at nine o'clock. The guys had already assembled behind us and they were waiting to slot in but unfortunately, me and Mark had frustratingly discussed what could have happened if the fish had just moved across us 24 hours prior. Typically, they only moved in that morning and it was time to go. But just as I was packing the last bits in the rucksack, the rod skipped across the gravel and I was into my last carp of the session. That's one, right on me spot. Can we do anything? Do what? Do we do anything? That's fine, mate. We got him. Well done, mate. <laughs> Good work. There we go, look. Look at that. An unusual blemish on one side. Yeah. Another carp in the net, mate. Awesome. There we go. There he is. And that is the end couple of days at Linear. Excuse the glasses, steamed up, covered in carp splatter. But uh, we've got to pack up, but we'll be back. We'll definitely be back. What do you reckon? Well, that's a wrap, mate. That is it. Thank God for my Holly. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> mate, it's never a truer word spoken if you say that you have to be on them. The guy next door down the way a bit, who had a bumper night the night before, uh, had nothing last night. So no. it just goes to prove, mate, they seem to move around in a big shoal. Yeah. If you're on them, you're going to catch them if you're fishing well. If you're not, then, oh, frustrating times. Yeah. Uh, mate, it's interesting. It's, um, you're keen to come back at some point and give it another go, I think. Um, yeah, really interesting, isn't it? Like, in terms of spots, bait, all that. Because there's fish going around all the time. So at some point, they're on you, aren't they? So yeah. it's making the most of it. It's good. How ironic. I got to choose the first swim this time. We're That's one all. Well, to be fair, it wasn't, I don't know. When we first turned up there, there wasn't really much in. 
which swim to go on, was there, to be fair? So Mate, that, there was no choice. It was what's available. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, it was, to be fair. Mate, let's get back on the road. I've yeah. got to get back to bait where it's serve you. Yeah. Bullies to roll, people to see, things to do. That's right. That's yeah. it. Until the next time. Until next time. See you then. Look at that big thumb. I'm not even going to focus. Is it going to focus? Yeah. <laughs> see you later.